Okay, so we're just going to set up a Mark spreadsheet. And this is following instructions on the Google Sheets for Mark's recording and analysis instructions for teachers. So it's assuming that you've got that in front of you to help with this. First thing you need to do is to download the actual document from the and make a copy. So that's the blank mark sheet that you get from following the link. Then you need to make a copy and you rename your copy. So I'll just call this one test spreadsheet and then also put a put it in a folder that would you know you can find it and I'm just going to keep it in there at the moment. Okay, so we've now got a working copy of the mark sheet and you can see that to start off with all it has been put in is just some blank um, some test data and just test marks. The names are obviously fictitious. Well, they're not fictitious if you're a science teacher. They're all famous Scottish scientists. But that's our raw data. So we're just going to use that and format it up. First thing we're going to do is to, is to change the width of the columns. So if you click on column A and then shift on column B, both of those columns are highlighted. I'm just going to widen them out so it'll take some names a little bit more easily there. And similarly for the other columns, they're just going to have numbers in and we might want to add more columns. So holding down shift, pressing on column G, and then if you look in the, when you're moving the columns around, in between the two columns, the cursor changes to a double-headed arrow and just pull that back in and that changes all the columns at the same time. Just make that a little bit wider so we can get the information in there. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next thing is that when you're moving around a spreadsheet, you tend to lose your top or left handmost columns and rows. So if we go into form view and then freeze, we can actually freeze the top two rows and we'll freeze the names as well. So view and freeze and then the left hand two columns. So now when we're moving around, it makes it a little bit easier to see that we're not losing the names and the column headings. We don't have grid lines in Google Sheets. Um, you can see the grid lines on the screen, but when it's printed, it doesn't have grid lines. So unlike Microsoft Excel, so what we'll do is just highlight, we're gonna go right down to row 30 in case we are needed to add new pupils to the class. It's always worth putting a bit of extra in there for all your formulas. So we're gonna highlight that area and then the borders, we'll pull that down and select the solid line borders for all the cells. So that means that everything's got a border around it and that will now appear on the printout. Keeping that selection, A1 to G30, we're also going to go into format and alternating colors and that'll give a nice background which we can choose the color scheme of. And that color scheme means that we can now read across rows much more easily without accidentally switching rows. So that's our spreadsheet, the, the sort of look that we want there. Um, you could go around and make some other lines bolder, but I'll leave that at the moment there. So one of the things about typing in marks is that it's quite easy to accidentally type in a number that's bigger than the total. All the totals are listed here for each of the tests. So all these numbers here should obviously be less than the total. So what we can use is data validation. So if I highlight that, column all the way down to 30. So this would, even if we add in extra data, it would still do the job for us. And then go to data and data validation. And you then get a dialogue like this here. So what we're wanting is that the criteria is gonna be a number click on number, and the number is going to be less than or equal to, and we want it to be less than or equal to this total up here. Now, rather than just typing in the number for the total, we can actually make it refer to that cell there. So to do that, you press in equals E, and then a dollar sign, and three. So that's saying that the, the number in these here must be less than or equal to that number which is in that cell. The reason a dollar sign is there is to make sure that it's always that row that it's referring to. And for that, we're gonna say we don't even want the warning. You're just not able to put any input in there. So we'll reject the input. And so the warning message that would come up is that the number must be less than or equal to the total. And we'll save that. 
And now if I try to put in for Anne Glover that she got a mark of 31, what it'll do is give an error there and I've got to go back and try again and put in that mark there. The other thing you might want to do with your marks is to get an average, and that's easy enough to do. Um, I've put the averages space at the top of the screen because it's that's where you'll want to find it, around the bottom. And so I'm going to, again, just type in a formula. So to type in a formula, you hit the equals key and then type in average. It will suggest average, and you can click on that if you want. And then you've got the brackets showing you the range over which you're going to get your averages. So I'm, there's two ways to do this. You can either type in the letters E4 to E30. So just try that. E4 colon E30. Close the brackets and do that. And then it'll give me the average there. The other way is if we try again. So I've got average. And then you can just highlight through the whole range of cells that you want the average for. So I'm going... Again, by highlighting through that, press return, I've got the same average calculation. And the average calculation is obviously um, to a high number of decimal places. What you can do is reduce that number of decimal places using the decrease decimal places shortcut up here. And we'll take that down to maybe one decimal place, which is probably all you'd want for that. You can also do the same thing for these cells here a lot more quickly by just by copying that formula across. If you go back to that cell and click on the corner, you see how that's now turning into a sort of cross that crosshairs. If I drag that through the next three cells, it'll repeat that formula and the formatting. So I've now got the averages for all these columns as well. So that's making life a lot quicker there. We're going to create a second sheet with percentages, but before we do that, best to name this one. I'm going to name this one by pulling up on the sheet one arrow there and click on rename. And then we can rename that. I'm going to rename it raw marks space M-A-R-K-S return. And then we've got that as a new sheet there. Using the same arrow there, we can then duplicate that sheet. So we've got a second sheet and I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call this percentages. And we've now got two sheets that look obviously identical. But what we want in this one is this to be a live copy of what anything changes that we make in raw marks will be reflected over here. First thing that's possibly worth doing just to save confusion is to change the color of the uh, rows that we had before there. So if we go back to format and alternating colors and just make it a different color scheme, then we know which we're moving between. The next thing is a little bit scary. We're going to highlight all the, the cells in here. Click on that top left, which is blank, but that highlights all the cells in your spreadsheet. We're then going to just delete everything that's in that copy. So we're going to go into edit. And then delete values. Delete values means that it only takes out the data, it leaves the formatting. And then we've got that's completely empty. But this one has still got all originals. Now I want to anything that's changed in raw marks, I want to be the same over here. So to do that, if we go to cell A1 and in cell one A1, I'm going to say it's going to be equal to single speech marks, raw space marks speech single speech marks and then an exclamation mark and that's saying right we've got to look up that raw mark spreadsheet and we'll put in there whatever's in cell a1 goes into my new spreadsheet in a1 and that's where we've got the where it now says class because that's what it says over an a1 of raw marks good news is we're not going to have to do that for everything if we click on the that cell and again, crosshairs there to drag that formula across. And then we've got the same thing across there. And then drag that all the way down to G30. Then we've set up our copy of our spreadsheet. So we'll come back to this in the next video.